hi there. Um, I'm Vicky. And I'm Glenn. We're Happy Campers Australia. And we just thought um, we need to do a reintroduction for those who don't know us. Um, we've Happy Campers Australia Facebook page actually started back in 2014. So that was back in the day when no one really did it. Um, even like the famous like trip in a van didn't start, I think, until 2015. Mm. Um, so what I'm saying there is we've been around for the long haul um, and you know, we, and we've, we're not going anywhere. So, Still um, don't know much. No. <laughs> but let's start with the backstory of about us. So, um, Glenn? Yeah, I've started my trade as a motor mechanic and progressed all the way to service advisor. And that was... Your whole working life? 26 years, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, around um, cars. Yep. And myself, pharmacy assistant. Um, same thing, started in pharmacy you know, straight after school and it's all I ever did. So both of us were in the same profession all our working lives. Yeah, Vicky had a bit of a background in photography. And when photo labs used to be yeah. part of pharmacy. When film was you know. film. <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, I had a, had a go at that too, but always in pharmacy all my life. Um, so our story actually starts before Facebook, Happy Campus Facebook, if we backtrack to 2012. So what happened in 2012, Glenn? What happened in 2012? Here we go. <laughs> I had a stroke. That's why I can't remember much. Uh, <laughs> yes, I had a uh, dissected vertebral artery stroke, which is an unusual one, uh, but lucky that one of... Oh, not many people survived it. Mm, he was, uh, he's very Phil lucky Hughes man. Phil Hughes is a notable one that didn't, unfortunately. Uh, the cricketer. Yep. He got hit in the neck. I was go-karting and um, the I dis dissected it because it's just a little artery that goes, kind of winds through your spine and uh, unlucky enough to dissect it in three spots. So He's very lucky to be here. And... Um, had a um, huge recovery. He had to learn to walk again. Yeah, so um, that gave us a big rethink and uh, yeah, life's sure. too short. For yeah. sure. So um, once he recovered, um, went back to work, we decided um, that, yeah, life is too short and that we had both been in the same jobs for so long. We had oodles of long service leave. So it was mm. time to travel more and use our long service leave regularly. So that then kept up the content with Happy Campers, with nice and fresh content. Um, oh, starting Happy Campers in 2014. Um, lots of fresh content using all our long service leave. Um, plodding along, fast forward again to 2017. And 2017... 2017 was a bit of burnout for myself. Um, with work? Yeah, yeah. Work had some issues and I went back a little bit earlier than I anticipated. After the stroke, you mean? After means. my stroke and, um, yeah, just ended up working myself to Overload. the bone. Yeah. yeah. And um, it then turned to a medical mental health issue in 2017. Mm. It was really quite bad. Um, and so with the help of some psychology and... Oh, yeah, the usual lots, yeah. depression and anxiety and... Which issues takes that, its toll. Yeah, that happens. But so, um, yeah, so we've kind of gone through that. And then, you know, we then had to rethink again. Okay, this whole taking long service leave thing, and it was, he was still working, and those triggers at work were still happening. Mm. So um, we made a huge decision, even though we weren't ready to leave for full time. Our ideal was going to be five to 10 years as. People have this in their mind, you know, we'll do this in five to ten years. We decided it really had to happen soon. Um, so we decided um, we would take a gap year in 2018. 2018 gap year, yes. and Run away from everything <laughs> for him and um, it was it was a best decision. Yeah, running away to Tasmania was good. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, so our gap year... Um, started in 2018. Now, for those who have, of you who are planning um, to travel full-time, the best piece of advice that we can give is to make a date 
and work towards it and don't change it. Um, save like crazy just you, to, well, we saved like crazy just to pay most of the house off. What, yeah, what we did instead of saving and putting it into an account um, to travel, we just threw it all off the mortgage, you know, tried to get that mortgage right down so that, so honestly, we can't say, I don't remember how much we had in so-called savings mm. because it was just thrown off the mortgage with the whole intent of redrawing um, to for our gap year. Mm. Um, and that's what we did. And we still redraw from time to time. We work as minimal as possible <laughs> because our gap year wasn't long enough. Um, no. So five years later, we're still on yeah, that gap, gap year. year. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where's my notes here? Um, what we did with our house, um, we've got young adult boys. They were both in their early 20s, I think, back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, or even in their late teens, yep. not ready to leave home. Um, so they live in the house. Perfect situation for us. They're still yep. there. Um, we fight for the TV every time we come home. Yeah, <laughs> so we visit home, we say. Mm. We're always home for Christmas. Um, and usually a couple of times throughout the year, we just pop in for a week or two and just make sure everything's going okay yeah. and they're mowing the lawn and all that stuff, you know, young men. Um, but it works perfectly for us because we didn't have to store our furniture. They're not good at mowing the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> um, they pay us a little bit of rent and it just, in our situation, that works perfectly for us. Um, so our travel rig. We have... Travel rig, yes, we're on our second Kokoda, off-road, well, Digger 2 now. We were on a Digger 1 when we first started, and previous to that, we were doing it in a Jayco Swan. That was all with our long service leave and everything while we were, mm. had, yeah, mm. our boys, the Jayco Swan. So... And the Ford Ranger replaced an Everest that we had in earlier, which we had an unfortunate accident in Tasmania with that. Mm. Mm. I've got a section here I'm going to talk about our difficulties. So that's, um, we'll talk. Oh, in, is that in the, am I pre You're jumping the gun. I? <laughs> I should read the scription. <laughs> All right, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> okay, so we travel in a Kokoda off-road van, Ford Ranger, and really it is perfect for us. Yes. Um, we squiggle all over the countryside. We don't do the typical lap. I don't know. Can you see? Um, we zigzag all over the country. So when we took our gap year, we never intended on doing a typical lap because with all our other trips that we'd done, we'd done so much already. We were filling in the gaps. Mm. And 150,000 Ks later, um, we've got a pretty impressive looking map there. Um Camping, we mainly free or low cost camp, and earlier in our that's our default is free or we, low cost. We prefer yeah. earlier in our travels, um, the first couple of years pre COVID, our average nightly cost was around seven dollars a night. Um, so we did pretty well there. Um, obviously, we've got cost of living increases now, and everything's gone up. So the last probably 18 months, our average nightly cost has gone up to around $14 a night. But when we average that out over the whole five years, we've got an average of $11.05 per night for the five-year period. So we're still pretty happy with yeah, that. Not too bad. Hmm. Okay, so we'll run through the difficulties we've had in our... Five years. Five years of journeying around Australia. Hmm. Starting off with 2019, uh, we had the car written off in a traffic accident on the last day of our Tasmanian hmm. journey. Very stressful. Yes. It was stressful to, because it was the last day and we were booked to get on the Spirit of Tasmania to come back home. And we had no vehicle to get the van on. Hmm. So, long story, very stressful story. We ended up having to get a tow truck to get the caravan onto the boat. Um, and some beautiful friends who met us in Melbourne, who then towed the van from the boat um, to their backyard. Yeah. Where we camped in their backyard for weeks um, in search of a new vehicle in Melbourne. Um, the... 
we had some poor advice on from this there was advice from the stevedores there was advice from the spirit of tasmania uh reception because um this had happened before and people yeah. had towed the whole damaged vehicle and caravan onto the the spirit of tasmania but our car was not drivable hmm. so and they told us we tried to postpone the spirit and they told us that there's no way you can't get a caravan space for months you need to get with this caravan so we left the car in tassie um and yeah went to melbourne and dealt with it all interstate so anyway that's um we had an everest that was written off and made the decision to update to our ranger which we still have today so um it was a quick decision we had to make obviously it interrupted our travels put a, a hold on those yeah, for we looked at land cruises weeks and of, stuff like that we looked at so much in those few weeks and then of course it's not just a matter of buying a vehicle you have to fit it out too for full-time yeah, travels we'd gone from a um, uh, suv to a cab chassis um so that was we had to different again so yes we had to strip out the wrecked vehicle or get insurance to strip out the wrecked vehicle send everything you know back to the mainland so that we could then put it into the new vehicle and oh yeah yeah so long story funny. long won't, story won't do that again okay mm. our next difficulty which this one's not dissimilar to too many full-time travels was covid um we were in yeah. 2020 we were in wa when covid struck um, and our hometown is New South Wales. so Up, up around Geraldton. Mm. Yeah. So we were sent home 5,000 Ks. Um, and those who were travelling home during um, COVID know how horrible that was, how people were so nasty and rude and towns didn't want to know you. And mm. um, But as I said, not too dissimilar to other full-time travellers. So we got back to New South Wales. And seriously, we were in lockdown for two weeks after we got home before New South Wales were allowed to travel again. Mm. So as you can see, the whole of 2020, New South Wales is pretty seriously done there. There's a lot of lines. We um, well and truly covered New South Wales for that period. Yeah. Um, as far as the Murray? Uh, or anything. We just couldn't go into Victoria. We couldn't, you know, we were stuck in New South yeah. Wales. But that was, not, that was fine. We could still travel. So, you know, we continued that. Um, then in 2021, um, we had got into Queensland. Um, all was good earlier in the year. And our son fell critically ill back in Newcastle. We were up at Cape York. Cape York at, at the at time. Bamaga. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it was oh, he, you know, trying to figure out how to get a flight back. Well, urgently, mm. really urgently. He was in ICU and he might not survive. So that was, oh, it still tears me up. You know, that was so stressful. Mm. So um, he, he had to have 700, 600 and 50 mil of his bowel removed so that was and uh, um just complications i see you i see you for so long and in hospital for ages and so we were at his bedside meantime the borders closed hmm. <laughs> our car and vehicle we were up at atherton and we couldn't get them back stuck hmm. over the border so i mean our focus was on our boy so um, we couldn't go anywhere anyway because the, of the lock. Then we were all in yeah, lockdown. Yeah, everybody that, got in the lockdown. That was New again. South Wales' most serious lockdown was twenty twenty one. So our focus was on our boy. Um, we arranged transport after a, quite a while to get our car and van back. Several thousand dollars later, we got it back. Got got it back, but mm. there's no way w anybody could get up there to bring it back for us unless it was a transport company. Yeah. So that was very stressful, but um, we had our car and van back. So once um, our son was well enough to travel, he still needed our full-time care for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so he came along in the caravan with us. So we had our van back, so yeah. we, we travelled. Luckily, it's a, it was the son that does like to travel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if it had been the other way he, around. He yeah. does enjoy travel. He was very sick and disappointed with himself that he could not do as much as he would have loved to have done but he was on the road you know out in the great outdoors um it, it was good for his recovery i think mm. and then 2022 it seems like every single year we've had 
a difficulty, 2022. Yeah, mum's passing. Yeah, but, um, um, unexpected passing, but we were mm. just so thankful that we were close by so we could be there when that happened. So um, I suppose you look at all those hiccups and other travellers might have called it quits by now. Um, so like, like we've got that, that passion and that drive and that, you know, we're in this for the long haul that, mm. um, you know, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so if you're enjoying our content, you know, we'll, we'll be making a lot more for the years to come. So, you know. And, and even old content, you know, I've, some things that we've we videoed but have never really included in any YouTubes or anything Our YouTube like that. YouTube has evolved, really, yeah. because... Um, in the early days, we were just doing little snippets and they were like little, um, what do they call them now? The shorts, really. Shorts, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but it was... They were about three minutes long yes, instead of yes, one yeah. minute long. Yeah. So. so it's only, YouTube has only really come along the yeah, last 12 months just, or more. I was disappointed with Facebook because of the compression algorithms that they do. That the high definition drone footage looked terrible. <laughs> so... So I started these little YouTube um, video snippets. And that probably leads me to, we hadn't mentioned, um, you know, part of Glenn's recovery from his mental health has been photography. Hmm. And um, that has, um, your passion and your ability has really grown over the years on the road too. Um, you Yeah, I've, you know, it was one of those things when I was a young fella back in the day. <laughs> it was... Um, photography and oh just i likened it to when i was a rifle shooter you know you could just disappear in the bush and take well now nowadays you take photos <laughs> but also astronomy are you always used to like that as well and that's a thing to switch. Yeah, I'm getting too old for astronomy. It's too cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, I mean, we still travel with, a, travel with a telescope. You know, yeah, we still, we still have travel that. with a telescope. Um, and he still loves his... Which goes back to 2016, Yeah, tra yeah. star photography and um, nighttime photography. But his photography has really improved over the years, and it's been... Um, when it's not blurry, it's good. Been a good medicine for him. Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, travel has been the best medicine... For mental health really hmm. yeah um what else so have we got to say? i don't know i think we might be nearly done um what do you reckon yeah well, let's wrap it up here wrap it up here so like, like and subscribe all that kind of stuff that'd be great mm -hmm. um free to do that and um yeah if you like our content we'll be producing it and give us some comments are we doing it right would you like to see more what do you want stuff what do you want improved yeah all that kind of stuff. All right. Thanks for put, putting up with us and um, we hope you've learned a lot about us. We'll see you in our next episode. See you on the road. Bye.